What is up guys? I know a lot of you have been playing League over the holidays and now especially season 7 has started. So I've been prepping this video for about a month now. I think keeping track of win rates in bronze, silver and gold to bring something that has some kind of backing to it and not just my opinion. Anyway, let me know what you think of these, what you've been using, like the video if you do. We're going to split this into bronze, silver and gold though, so timestamps are down below. But the explanations are going to work for all three ELOs. So you can still learn from the lower brackets as well. These will also still work up to diamond level honestly, especially if you don't have as much time to play the game. So we're going to start with bronze and for the top lane top is pretty much an island right if you can win 1v1 then they won't really know how to recover that well which means you can keep punishing you can dive them and you get this huge lead. After you've won your lane you can keep hammering them or just TP or run down and be a huge issue in the fight so that's kind of your role. Garen is the first god tier champion here he's got a simple kit which is a really easy trade right you Q you science they can't return any damage. You have the sustain from your passive which means when you screw up you're not punished for it and you're a tank melter but you also be carries so like you build tank it lets you focus on the rest of the game more. I'm not trying to say you're only supposed to play really easy champions but the reason you want to play something with a simpler kit is because you don't have to focus on what you're doing with that champion or how you need to do it or really hard mechanics or anything. You can focus on the rest of the game. Anyway Darius is the second one. He fits the idea of winning lane and roaming mostly. Like it's really hard to out trade him with most champions honestly. With short trades he's going to heal it back up afterwards with his Q anyway and with the longer ones he has his bleed damage. It's just very easy to know how you're actually going to win a trade. You auto till you have four stacks and you press R. That's pretty much it but in teamfights like being kited around is actually a really big issue in most elos but it's not that bad in bronze with 80 carriers who can't really kite for the jungle in bronze you want to be able to farm but gank as well you have a good mid to late game because you can actually carry then gank heavy junglers are great in everything you can win the whole map maybe with a really good game but honestly like it's more pressure and a risk on you which we don't really want here we want something easy and consistent over like 100 games so shivana is the best farmer in the game really you're really strong anyway but solid for bronze because of how easy you are to have an impact in the game. You press W, you press Q, you auto until they are dead in fights. It doesn't get much simpler than that. And also the farming means you're always able to get loads of gold, but your ganks are okay as well if you need to. The Mumu is the crowd control low elo god that's kind of famed for it, I guess. The biggest issue is always being evaded, but that's not a problem at lower ranks as much. Your ganks are actually decent with your Q stun followed up by your ultimate. Your team fight is amazing, but you can actually hard carry the game with damage while being tanky. Again, there are no insane same mechanics involved with the movement which let you focus on the fight or actually the general game more. Mid lane we already have four things. So how easy is it to do your job and carry? How safe are you? How good are you at roaming? And how good is your lane phase? These are the most important things that by far here in the bronze. Your lane phase means a lot mid. So it's important you can actually win it or at least be difficult to lose it. Ari is the best champion to learn mid lane with I'm going to say 100% mainly because of your ultimate. If you make a mistake or you get caught you ult away and you're not going to be punished for it. You're not going to lose for it. You have the heal from passive so it's very forgiving playstyle anyway. You have wave clear, your charm to set things up. But you don't even need to hit your Q and E honestly later to kill people. You can dive in with your W and that will one shot them. And E is the second one because you're very easy to farm and get gold, which leaves you to focus on trading and other stuff. You're always a threat because you have your stun. You can ultimate and one shot people, which is great. But flash ults can turn games as well. Your job is just very easy to know and to do, which is a massive plus. Those are the two things actually to winning a game really. You have to know what you want to do and you have to be able to do it. And with Annie, you can do both of those pretty easily. For AD carry, you have to have a decent-ish lane phase, a good late game and team fights as well so you can eventually carry the game but also do well in early skirmishes which is a bit like a clown fiesta. You don't really want to rely on your team very much but actually in bronze, even more than support, AD carry is the weakest role by far. It has the lowest win rate across any role. Saying that, misfortune is number one. The damage in the lane phase is nuts with your Q bounce which is very hard to play against and to actually avoid. It's basically free damage with no return. The ultimate in team fights is the biggest thing though because AD carry damage is normally one person. It's very high but it's single target right? You actually do that over five people which is why you can hard carry. You're kind of more like a mid laner than an AD carry which is good because you come online a lot earlier and you can have this AOE impact. Jinx is the right click queen. You all are very simple. You stay in rocket form. You right click. You let runins and crit do the rest of the work which is great for us. Because it is that simple it's easier to look at where you're standing and stuff like that in a team fight who you're actually attacking and you can also take towers faster than most and do work early into the game the most auto champions. Support is actually probably easier to carry than AD carry at bronze and I'm not kidding honestly you have a better win rate overall because you can carry bad AD carries more but you can roam to help other lanes as well. You can set stuff up mid game. Sona is the best team fight support in a bronze. You have a low cooldown heal to help your AD carry or anyone you negate poke especially but you have your big ultimate which can change a fight or set one up. You're more about playmaking than other defensive ones and that's what makes you number one or god tier in bronze. Blitzcrank is no real surprise really because people suck at 
dodging more. You don't respect the fact you can run at them and fist and then hook afterwards. People get caught mid game all the time. That's basically a one game if you get pick after pick after pick. So let's move on to silver now. Some are the same, which will kind of skip over a little bit. So for the top lane, it's the same idea where you want to win our lane early and quite hard. But if we can do that and not be stopped 1v1, then it makes the game really hard for the enemy team. They're likely going to feed you more, to be honest. Darius moves to the top pick here now, actually, because he can dive so easily and win 1v1 trades, but also 1v2. And if you get ahead and they try and stop you, it's really easy to turn them around with reset and dunks. Swain is the new god tier champion here. Really hard to play against because you just poke them down and they can't really do too much about it. By the time they figure out they need to fight you, they're too low because you've just poked them down. They can't farm very much. And if they try to fight you at that point, you're bird form and you're going to heal back up anyway. Plus you get very tanky. You're actually going to be able to carry team fights really hard, more than you think. I know it's a bit of a surprise pick, but he is god tier at the moment for lower ranks. In the jungle, we're now putting a bit more pressure on you, the player, to do stuff in the game. You can handle the basics, but still, if you can't gank, you have the farming to fall back on and you get gold that way. You can also carry late game still. Savaya is going to come in at number one because she has more damage than Savannah. Well, actually, more burst damage, and that means they can't really react at all. So you can catch people by surprise. You also have the easiest gank ever by pressing R. It forces you to have an impact, actually. If you think about it, every time your ultimate's up, you're going to go and try and use it because it's such a big thing and so easy to use as well. You build damage, you abuse Courage of the Colossus to stay healthy, which is great. But second spot is actually still going to be Shivana. Again, like Bronze, you hard farm the jungle and can carry late game like a beast. You can still impact and gank lanes if you need to, but there isn't as much pressure on you. So for the mid lane, you still want to win a 1v1, but roaming is going to come into it a lot more in silver or punishing roams, actually. What we want is something that is going to be able to do damage from range, ideally, and not rely on your team very much. So Ziggs is really good in bronze still, actually, like win rate wise, but silver a bit more god tier. You are fully skill shot based, but you only need to hit a few of these with his actual damage because it does so much. And he beats Lux really hard, which is the most popular mid pick over the past month in bronze, silver and gold. You take towers, you have wave clear and insane poke and team fight with your ultimate. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. He's not that tough, to be honest. Ori is again here for the same reasons. Forgiving can push your limits and make mistakes, but you're not going to lose games for them. And also roaming is going to come in way more. You can ultimate from a whole screen away to gap close and get into a gank. AD carry is getting slightly better now, but with more roams comes more early fights. So we actually want to be able to dominate team fights, but punish weaker laning phases. Players don't really trade as much and it's less about surviving and more about punishing now. Twitch is probably god tier at every single elo above this now, but still in general, you're good because you have long range. You can stay safe. Your W gives you a bit of wave clear and trading now and your Q can escape or it's easy to prey on people. They don't really think you can just stealth in and be there. They don't think about that. They don't respect that as much. And it's very easy to snowball early to mid game. Jinx is the same as before really, but now we can punish a bit more early. We use our chompers to set things up with our support. We have our zapper ultimate. We can move around and push towers as well, which is more than just right clicking. It's giving our team gold. For the support, Bliss and Sona are still going to be the god tier ones here. So we're going to skip over these a little bit. A lot of supports work at these elos, but those are the ones that stand out as god tier ones. So finally for gold then, top lane, this is where it's going to get a little bit harder now because you get ganked more and it might not be a simple 1v1. People are going to trade a bit more. They should pressure you and team fights are not going to be as straightforward. Darius is still going to be our top god tier champion though. The reset comes into play a lot more now and your ability to get ahead and kind of keep crushing. One of the biggest things still top lane especially is it's very hard to actually come back when you're behind and Darius is probably the best at punishing that. Swain is again here but we're more looking at the hard to play against aspect and just in general a beast of 1v2 fights and team fights. You can actually hard carry a game and most people won't know how to beat you either which is definitely going to play into your favor. Kind of being unkillable but still doing a ton of damage. I'm going to include a third one because those two have been the same. So Yasuo, this is the point where he kind of takes off more, I think. If he gets fed early, he can be a nightmare to deal with. And to be honest, it's not even that hard to face roll if you do. Like, he's a bit hit and miss, right? Some are going to feed, but if they get fed, they can actually really enter god mode and just 1v5. The jungle is going to change a lot at this elo. We now want to focus more on ganking and impacting other lanes, controlling the whole map, pressuring people and winning their lanes for them. Farming is nice and everything. It's good gold generation. You still want to do it, but the other jungler is going to be more active. So you need to be as well. Shaco is legit god tier if you can play him at this elo. He's kind of a hard champion to know what to do, but doing it is not really that difficult. It's like timing your ganks right, getting lanes ahead, and it can be a really easy game. So it's all about doing the right thing at the right time. You also have this added bonus of being able to assassinate and one-shot people yourself. So you're not even team reliant because you can dive in and remove the enemy mid laner or enemy AD carry. Vi is going to move down to our second spot. She's easy to play, but just hard carries at this elo properly because you build so much damage. You can one-shot people. You have really good ganks even early with your Q as well, but you can also duel most other junglers if you find them. Plus, 
you invade well. For the mid lane, lane phase actually doesn't matter as much anymore. Really, it's more about what you can do in a team fight. Obviously, you don't want to lose 1v1 or anything like that, but your whole team shouldn't crap the bed as often now, so you can just nail down team fights. This is actually the first elo bracket where I think Lux becomes a reliable champion to climb with. You have insane damage, but it's best when you're proactive with it. You need to look to bind and set up a combo, and it means you play the game basically a 5v4 if you can delete someone at the very start. In bronze and silver, Lux players can still have a massive impact, but they actually sit back a lot and wait for fights to happen, which is not the way you like hard carry a game yourself. Diggs is very good against Lux, as we said earlier, so naturally he's going to be here. Also, mid players are going to roam more, which means you take their towers so easily. You have decent kill pressure as well, and you're still a very, very good team fight champion, so you scale into the game, which means you can have an impact early into the lane phase and mid game and also late game. Ari is still god to here, but it changes a little bit. She's way more aggressive now. You can ultimate forward, you can try to charm if you hit it, you nice, then you just go. If not, you ult away, and it's only the cooldown that's actually lost. So it's like a risk free chance of getting kills. For AD carries, mechanics should be a bit better, so we're now looking to do more work in the game, especially early. Winning lane will mean a bit more, and we need some team fight damage, but also staying safe. Twitch is going to tick all of these boxes, except maybe staying safe, I guess, but that's kind of covered by the supports more, which we'll get into in a second. You still have your Q, which can prey on people with stealth, and also roaming a lot more. You want to leave bot lane, you want to go to mid lane, and it's a great way to snowball mid game. Kaylin is going to replace Jinx in the god tier now, because there is more she can do early, and to stay safe as well. She's also very simple still. Your net is actually seriously irritating to play against. Also, combos do a lot of work, so trap headshot, net headshot with a Q in between is insane damage. You're going to be able to handle early game skirmishes, you'll carry late game as well. Traps help to zone and you have a high range as well. So actually, she's very simple, but there's a lot more she can do. Finally, supports. Now that you should have better-ish teams, you can swap to the redemption meta of just making the enemy team overextend to kill your team, but they don't die because of you. Janet is going into god tier now. Redemption plus shield plus ultimate is more than enough to keep even the worst players alive. You'd be surprised how much impact you can actually have in a team fight, to be honest. Soraka is more obvious of an effect. Like, Janna, you can carry under the radar, but Soraka, you have your cross map impact to silence, which used properly can really help win trades or ganks. It's not used as much lower down, which is partly why she's not as good. It's also harder to play than Sony. You have to stay safe. You don't heal yourself as much. You poke more. You rely on your AD carry to take damage in trades so you can heal them. So this was actually pretty in-depth, and it should give you a really good idea of the easiest ways to win with each role at these ranks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, but for now, let's go to the robots.